Thanks for joining. We're going to take a look at the rich text editor that comes bundled with FileMaker 19. It's a JavaScript add-on, and it saves your text formatting in HTML. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. FileMaker end users have been able to manage formatting in a text field since, since the beginning. But to format this text in HTML is important for those who adopt it as their workplace innovation platform. It's becoming a hub to many other services. When we bring information from, say, a content management system like WordPress or Drupal or a CMS like Salesforce or a mail delivery service like MailChimp, it is very beneficial to workflow to be able to make minor changes to be able to do the full thing in a FileMaker text field. And that's what this add-on makes possible. It is a web viewer that saves the text in HTML format into a FileMaker text field. When I type test, you can see that it is adding HTML around it over here. After our drag and drop installation, it comes set up in basic mode. And that gives us the ability to change the heading size and that will affect a paragraph, not a single word. We can highlight a single word or any selection, bold it, italicize, underline. We can select another selection, click the link button, and I could link this to click save. And now I have a linked text. You'll see that when I select all and I click the numbered list, I have a P tag here, which is separating these paragraphs and it will change it to HTML for ordered list, and then the LI is the list item. I can also make an unnumbered list, which is bullet points, and I can remove all formatting. And that is the rich text editor in its most basic form. If we go into the configurator, we have the option to get the advanced toolbar, and this will give us some additional features and so then I can change the size to an individual word. I get the addition of a strike through. I have the ability to quote that will take the entire paragraph and quote it like it does in an email. I can also click in this paragraph and click the pre-formatted button. Pre-formatted uses a fixed width font and is very useful for showing things like code and other things like that. And again, that affects the whole paragraph. I can highlight any text here and change the foreground color. I can change the background color. I can change the fonts. In this setup, we only have basic styles. I can align right, left, justified. I can also increase my indentation. It applies to the whole paragraph. If I click on the picture button, I can import an image. Now notice we don't have the ability to resize this image, so you have to take care of that before you import. But this image will store in base 64 in the actual text field. And that takes a great deal of image management out of the equation. Additionally, we have the option to change the style. And it comes with a second style called bubble. And how bubble works is your formatting options only appear after you've highlighted text. So when you either double click on a word or you triple click on a paragraph, or if you start at the beginning of the paragraph and highlight, then it will appear. Also, the basic version of Bubble is very, very simplified, giving me only six options. One additional option is to set this to read only. Now your users cannot get into this web viewer at all. You could also set up two instances on the same layout so that some users can edit and some cannot. Installing the Rich Text Editor JavaScript add-on is pretty straightforward. We're going to go into layout mode. You may need to show your objects pane, make sure your selected add-ons, and click the plus button. Now we are in our JavaScript add-ons and we will select the rich text editor. Over here we see a preview and we see that it's going to add some tables, some layouts, and some scripts. We click OK and it is now installed in our file. If we go and we look at our database, we'll see that it added an add-on table and a sample data table. If we look at our scripts, we'll see that it added a public folder and a private folder. We can leave this private folder alone 
things we need will be in this public folder. The actual installation into our layout is drag and drop. So we can put this on here and that is considered an instance. If we do it a second time, we'll make a second instance and this one can be configured entirely separately of this one. So now when we go into browse mode, we'll get a notice that says there's a configuration error. If we click OK, it'll take us in and we can't do much about this. And that is because we don't have any fields on the layout. So we go into fields tab and we grab a text field and we drag that in. And now when we go into browse mode, we get the same error. Click OK. And now we can choose from our text field. Now when we go in and we type hello, we can see that it's working. It's also important to note that if we go into layout mode, I click on this, that I can arrange, ungroup. And I can separate this configurator button and put it somewhere else if for some reason it does not work for me. Only users with full access on a desktop computer can see this configurator button. Having seen all this, I predict without reservation, there is a large number of you out there now saying, how do I make my own toolbar configuration? The answer is, it's doable, but it's not simple. You haven't been locked out of anything. This is an open source project. If we go in and we look at the HTML field of the rich text editor add-on table, this is the source code that makes all of this work. We can see right here that this is part of the Quill.js open source project. And we can go straight to this website. And we can see quickly that this is a widely adopted and trusted rich text editor, which is also very good. It makes the HTML that we're now storing completely compatible with lots of other services. This is fully downloadable. You can play with it, install it. There's lots of uh, documentation and guides on how to set it up and how to configure it. But knowing how to work with Quill is not really enough. The first hurdle is that the code, HTML, the JavaScript, and the CSS have all been combined and then minified. And minified is when you remove all the white space to decrease the character count and the overall size of the text. And then modifications have been made to make this work with FileMaker. We have a YouTube video called Introduction to JavaScript in a Web Viewer. Now it's not apples to apples, but it will open the gate to what's happening in here. If you chose to do this, the first step would be to copy this text and to separate it out into the three part. Then you'd want to jump into a beautifier and you'd want to load it up and run it. That makes it readable. Now, anything beyond this is way beyond the scope of this video. We'll be producing a Productive Computing University course on this subject matter, so be sure to check the description. Just subscribe to the channel or join the newsletter. We'll be making an announcement when that is ready. Hopefully that gives you enough information to make the assessment whether or not you want to try to tackle that. I hope that quick overview helps you out. And remember, liking a video is a great way to let us know that we are producing content you find valuable. We have a video about the fundamentals of JavaScript add-ons. That will go into more detail about things that all the add-ons share in common and best practices. If you subscribe, you'll get notices when new videos come out. And thanks for joining.